So I'm going to start you out, and then I'm going to give some of these older guys that I've seen do it before, going to come up and they're going to start praying. And then I'm going to ask some of you that have never done this to before to come up and start praying. Praying that you're never going to be the same. Praying that your school is never going to be the same. Praying that God helps you get to this place because it's only by His Holy Spirit that gets that deep change. What is this guy talking about? I'm talking about we are going to do it, you are going to do it. Because there's no difference between you and me. The same Holy Spirit that's inside of me dwells in you. The same power when I speak comes out of your mouth too. It's the same. All these guys that you're friends with, look at that. You have a support system too. And you have nothing to be embarrassed at. Are you guys ready? Let's do this. Jesus, we come before you this morning. Why don't we just begin to declare, God, that we are never the same because of you. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit comes and becomes the helper that you sent. Holy Spirit, come and don't allow us to go back to the ways we were, God. Lord, I pray right now that you begin to envelop the schools that these kids go to, even right now. Start impacting the teachers and the administrators, God. Begin to impact the kids that revival breaks out. Not the oozy-goosey stuff, God, but the things that cause impact change. Lord, I begin to pray right now, God, that you begin to revolutionize the Verde Valley, God. That God is not just going to be a one-time thing, but there's going to be a well of spring that comes up in that area. And it's going to be a youth movement that comes out of it. I prophesy to the youth of Verde Valley that they're going to rise up and they're going to take control. And they're going to change the story of their community. In Jesus' name. So God, I pray right now, God, that you would rise up boldness inside of us, to touch the kids in the Verde Valley, in Vegas, the CMS, in Camp Verde High School, God, I ask that you would give us boldness and courage to stand in faith. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would guide us in many ways, Lord, God, that we would have hope in mighty ways, God. Lord, we're no longer just going to sit. We're ready to move. You're waiting for us. We're not waiting for you. We have to move. So God, let them give us boldness to pray for those who are hurt. Give us understanding of what's going on around us. If we see someone in the corner, Lord, give us their feeling. Let us know that they're in pain and let us go to them, God say, listen, I know what you're going through. Let me tell you my solution. Let me tell you the reason that you're around. Let me tell you the reason. Let me tell you my breakthrough. God, give us spirits of evangelism. Show your love. The Bible says, well, the Bible says, or two or three agree on one thing, let it be. And so and he's, every time somebody's done praying, this is what I want you to say. We agree. One, two, three. We agree. Who's next? Dear God, thank you for loving us. And thank you for loving us how we are and how we don't have to change for you to love us. Thank you for giving me the words to speak today and yesterday. Thank you for changing every single one of our lives that were here because I promise you, a lot of our lives have changed. And if nobody else's life has changed, I promise you mine has. Thank you, God, for changing my life and opening up my eyes because I was on that fence, as Pastor Todd said. I was on that fence of giving it all or giving it nothing. Yes. And I'm giving it all. Dear God, I don't, I only, I want to come to you and just say that I hope not only the Verde Valley is impacted, but the world. Come on. I want to thank you for giving us the freedom to come to you and worship wherever we need to. Yes. Because not everybody in this world has that. Not everybody has that freedom. But we do, and I want to take advantage of that. Because you never know when it's going to be your last breath. And you never know when it's going to be the person next to you, their last breath. I want to thank you for loving us, God. One, two, three. Listen, all the adults back there, I want you to stand up. See, we as a generation can't do this without you. 
Start praying for these young people that they become one. The scripture says that the John the Baptist movement happens when the sons of the fathers, when the sons of the fathers return to the fathers and the fathers to the sons. And that's what's going to change. Begin to pray for them. As they praying right now for your home, for your community. Thank you, Lord, for always forgiving me for everything that I've ever done and ever will do, for loving every one of us and for endeavoring us up and for fighting for us and for healing our hearts with the broken. For being the center of our world. One, two, three. Come on. One, two, three.
Say it again. No, no, I thought you said it again. Say it again. What are you going to say? Say it. Let's go. Come on, get together. I want you guys to get together real quick. Here, let me see this real quick. Get together. That's it. Pull me down, pull me down, pull me down. Bring your hands up to them right here. Come on. I want to change this culture right here that is in the sports. They're going to be a light. This one right there. Father God, we're going to be a light. Over the sports of America. And they need us and they have to represent God. This comes to be a forbearance of the things that happen in the locker room. And the one that is in you have to be this way, Lord. What I got is the light comes inside of them, Lord. The day you're going to be the change in this place in the early valley, Lord. And it's going to reach through the nation, God. Allow them to be the point of the arrow that's going to begin to change. Athletics are the way that they represent. Allow God to be the number one representative in the locker rooms. Once again, in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Jesus' name. 
name. One, two, three. I'm going to come back here when you guys said I couldn't see you. And we're going to start right back here. Thank you. 
us in this world that he knows who he is, that he is a child of God, he's a son of God. We thank you, Father. And we all agree on one, two, three. I agree. Pray for your school. It's your turn. Come on, baby. Lord, I just want to pray over my entire school yes. area. It's great that you let them let them feel your grace. Let them be yes, inspired yes. with the love of yes, you. Yes. You are holy. Yes. Help them gain courage, bravery, <laughs> intellect. Fill more, just fill them and satisfy their hunger until they love you just as much as I do. Maybe even more. <laughs> and I just pray Come on. that all of them will be touched, that no one will be left out. And I thank all of you for joining me, not as cabins, or friends, but as a family. Come on. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And I just thank you for bringing us all together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. One, two, three. I agree. Come on. Come on, man. That's what we're talking about. Thank you. I want you to come. I'm going to ask you to pray the last prayer. And then I'm going to give it to Pastor Brent because he has a testimony before we go out to our breakout. But I want you to pray, man. I want you to pray what God's put on your heart. And I want you to begin to declare it over your friends and over everybody in this place. Do you hear what I'm saying? Let's do it. Dear my Father, the broken heads, the broken kids that are at home, God. For a witness that I am, who I know how to feel spilled. Have my father stripped from me to have the news that he committed murder from the cuts that dripped down from my shoulders of blood from my mother of abandonment and from my family of abandonment that called me a monster. I know how it feels in so many ways. I experienced too much to stand in the middle of the door late at night to make sure my brother and my sister was okay. But the prayer goes out to those that who will witness that. For I was there at that door, on my knees, crying myself to sleep, saying, where are you, God? For they were screaming for something new, wanted something more, for they knew something was more. For I stand as a living witness. For I want to share my love that my God washed upon me, that renewed me. From that drugs, the cutting, all that it came upon me for I thought that was the right life. Come on. But I felt reborn here. Yeah. But I pray for those at the schools, the hallways that lived the same life that I did. Yeah. The schools, the depression, all that is comparison to what we have felt that we stand here before. When we might look overlook them. We might overthink them. We might say they're too cocky, they're too, but inside they're saying, help me. Yeah. 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 Well, you guys came to this camp and you have a seat inside you, but I ask, don't dig with doubt that you bear it with faith. Yeah. Yeah. But set a fire in my soul that I can't, that I can't contain nor control. Home in the Liberty Valley, pacing in Arizona, the U.S., the world, God. Just a blanket of presence over you, just a witness, just a taste, because when you have that taste, you want more. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, you are praying for the nations and all that are around. Jesus, you are praying. Amen. One, two, three. I agree. what Pastor Josh said about the Bible study. I want to see you guys. Can we just be intentional about that? And I know some of you said that you can't. Yeah, we, we can start a Bible study. How about we actually do that? Yes. Uh, so is there somebody from every school who said, I'll go to the administration and I'll say, we want to do this at lunch, or we want to do this before school, after school. Is there somebody from every school that can do that? Come on. You're going to make the commitment. Make the Come commitment. On. Come on. Let's be real. And I'm telling you, it will change your school. When, when these, like Amanda here was in high school, she went to a school near our church, and she started coming to our church and a few of her friends, and they started to pray. One girl had this um, word from God. She said, I'm going to start a prayer circle before school. That's it. We're just going to stand outside the school and pray. And I was like, that's awesome. We'll see if anybody comes. That thing grew to almost 100 kids every single morning praying for the street. And then we did, I moved into the ministry in Pampa, Texas, and there was um, a few high girls who were like, man, they were just on fire for God. And I said, we're going to start a Bible study at lunch. Do you know how many kids started coming to our youth group because they, they 
you went to that Bible study because those girls had an impact on those around them, I'm telling you, it works. You can change your school, but you got to be intentional. You have to actually have to be like Josh said, you're going to go home and there's going to be a voice that says, oh, just go back to normal. Just go back to what you're doing. Go back to your routine. But I'm asking right now, step up. Somebody step up. And you saw these hands. Put your hands up again and you say, I'm going I'm to gonna stop the administration. I'll do it. And now you see these hands. Because guess what, guys? You can't do this alone. Look around. And see who said they're going to do it. And on one day, when you go back to school, I want you to say, are you talking to them today? Did you talk to them yet? What are we doing? Are we doing it at lunch? What day? Is it one day a week? Is it every day? What's it going to be? And figure it out. Because I'm telling you, you cannot do this alone. You need a root system. Trees don't survive without root systems. Every tree out there has a huge root system, system so when the wind blows, it doesn't fall over because there's roots. This is your root system around you right now. Your root system is going to grow. You need to get in your youth group. You need to get in your church on Sunday because guess what? Those adults, they think are boring. They don't know. They know what you experience here. That's why they're crazy for Jesus and they know and you need them. And guess what? They'll love you. You need spiritual mothers and fathers that when you go to church and you need help and you need prayer, you can go to them and you say, I need help. This is what's going on. You need it, you need it, you need to get in youth group, you need to get in there on Sunday. Let me pray, and then, and then we'll give it to Pastor Greg, give us some stuff what we're doing next. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just declare, Lord, that there are young people, God, who are going to be intentional about impacting their communities all around this state, Lord. I believe we're going to see ripple effects from what you're doing now, right now, this weekend, God. I believe this moment is to build momentum in this state, because there's souls, there's friends, there's family, there's people all around them in their schools, in their communities. Going 